joining me to unpack all of this is the founder of the Article 3 Project, Mr. Mike Davis. Mike, thanks so much for being here. Look, no matter what goes forward, they did something. And that's big. And I think that they deserve praise for actually doing something. Those Republicans that stood and uh, stood to their ground and insisted to, on not accepting the um, status quo. So I want to hear what you think about uh, Congressman Mike Johnson as he steps into this new role. You say he's an effective constitutional lawyer. Um, he has in the past stood up for election integrity. He's pro-life. Uh, he isn't afraid to call out the weaponized federal government. He is also well-respected across the Republican spectrum. So what do you expect to see from him now as Speaker Mike? I think that Speaker Mike Johnson will be outstanding. He is a rock-solid conservative. He's very smart. He's a very effective constitutional lawyer. He's well-respected by his Republican colleagues all across the spectrum, uh, and I think he's uh, he hasn't been in the swamp long enough to destroy him. He's been in there long enough to know how it works, but not long enough to destroy him. He's He's been in the House for like five or six years. He was in the Louisiana legislature before that. He is the perfect speaker for the time, and it was well worth the three weeks of chaos. Thank you to Congressman Matt Gates for creating that chaos because we got to a much better result. And I think what Speaker Mike Johnson needs to do is be a bold conservative leader. And in this upcoming budget fight, he needs to hold the line. He needs to cut federal spending to pre-COVID levels. And so we put the federal government on a crash diet instead of having the American people have their 401ks destroyed, interest rates out of control, which makes home and ownership impossible, inflation out of control because of uh, oil prices and grocery prices. We need to put the squeeze on the federal government instead of American families. A, a lot of uh, voters are looking to see how he handles the impeachment inquiry that was begun by his uh, predecessor, former Speaker Met Kevin McCarthy, never really lived up to the promises he made and that's what led to his ousting. Um, in that desperate last minute effort, though, McCarthy, McCarthy did open up an impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. This is something Speaker Johnson has felt very strongly about for some time. So let's take a listen to see how he views the issue of impre impeaching, excuse me, President Biden. Listen. Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution itself expressly states that the sole power of impeachment belongs here to this House. And then Article 2, Section 4 says, listen to the language carefully. It's expressly written in the Constitution. This is not political talking points. We're not making this up. It says in Article 2, Section 4, that the president shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. My friends, I just listed a, just a small sampling, just the tip of the iceberg of, of the credible allegations and the mounting evidence that shows that Joseph Biden has engaged in bribery schemes, pay-to-play schemes. This is what the evidence shows. We have to follow it. We took an oath to uphold the Constitution. The Constitution requires this action. The inquiry is the appropriate step. We have no choice to pursue the facts wherever they lead, and we will leave no stone unturned. Uh, the Republican-led House has been slow moving on this impeachment process. Now that you have a Speaker Johnson who has said this before on the House floor, will we see perhaps a fire lit and see it move along more speedily now? Well, I hope so, because we have very clear evidence that the President of the United States is corrupt and he's compromised by tens of millions of dollars in foreign bribes and other corruption, it seems like, from every hellhole around the, the world, whether it's Ukraine with Russia, chi China and Taiwan, other places. And if the, the, the House does not perform its constitutional duty here to look into this, they are failing to do their jobs. Uh, real quick as well, Mike, what about that January 6th footage? That was one other promise that Kevin McCarthy broke and didn't follow up on. Do you think Speaker Johnson will release the footage? Well, I mean, you should. There's no question about it. You had the Democrats exploit the January 6th protest that turned into a riot, tried to claim it was some grand insurrection. How many insurrectionists get to a floor of a uh, Senate floor of a nation's capital 
and follow police direction and walk through velvet ropes and don't burn down the damn place. The Democrats used the January 6th riot to try to take out Trump, his top aides, his supporters, and th this video will show that this was by no means an insurrection. Yeah, I, I hope he does. And I also hope that given his uh, background as a constitutional attorney, that we see more movement on the weaponization of the federal government and, and action on that front. I think there's several actions he, could, he and Congress could take, and perhaps we can talk about that in a future segment, because unfortunately, we're out of time. We could talk to you much longer, though, if we had all day. Mike Davis, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.